when I was a young when I was a young boy in school, um, I would never dare raise my hand. Uh, I was always afraid that what I was going to ask or say would be criticized. So I was a really introverted young person, and and as time went on, and you know, as I saw other things, and as I listened to things, and and recognized some people asked the very question I wanted to ask. Um, I became uh, a, a bit um, enamored with the thought that maybe I had something to say, or at least maybe I was thinking some of the things other people were thinking. So I don't look as, at any of the acts that I was engaged in as heroic. I look at the acts that I was engaged in as simple, humane activities. So when people came to talk to me, I knew that it was important to them. Probably a bad analogy, but I rarely leave an email on my computer or very rarely do not make a phone call back to someone who called me in a very, very quick turnaround because I realized that to them, it may be very important and to me it may not be as important but i respect that person's desire to reach out now when people have come into my office or come into my home and spend time with me and ask me questions i you know it wasn't as if i had an answer for everything and and certainly there might have been times i even gave bad advice but the bottom line is they wanted to talk and they needed a platform to talk. And as a result, you know, we talked. I, I'll tell you a very short story that, that may or may not fit into this conversation, but it did for me. I had a next door neighbor when I was living in, in Manhattan, Kansas, uh, that asked me to come to his house. He was a not a person I knew all that well, but asked me to come to his house and, and told me in, in the conversation that he was dying of cancer, that he had terminal cancer. And, and he wanted to know if I had any words for him of encouragement or words that were, you know, Steve, I, you're always so upbeat. You know, I've seen you do this and seen you do that. And I would just love to hear what you have to say. And I was caught off guard and I was caught in a situation where I was, you know, was was hesitant to say something because I didn't want to say the wrong thing. And I don't know what the wrong thing would have been, but really what he wanted to do was talk. He wanted to have a platform and he wanted to have a conversation about, about his dilemma and about his circumstance. So we talked and he, he passed away within the next several weeks. And, and a couple of weeks later, I gave a presentation to a, uh, a national sorority gathering of maybe 3,000 women uh, in Kansas City. And in the front row of the, of the uh, presentation were, were women sitting there, and a couple of them had babies with them. And I, I had this speech prepared and was all set to go. And, and I looked down at the babies, and you know, I said, look, I... I know this is not going to mean a lot to all of you, but but I want to mention this. I just a few weeks ago was asked by a terminal cancer patient if I would have a conversation with him, and and I did, and and I don't know. I hope it helped. I don't know if it did or didn't. And now I'm standing here in front of all of you, and I'm looking down in the front row, and I see these three little children, these three babies that you're caring for. And it reminds me of the circle of life. It reminds me how all of this works, that people die, that people are born, uh, that people die sometimes with no hope or sometimes with a modicum of hope or are looking for something to, to ease the pain uh, and potential psychological devastation of death. And here are three little children that are nurtured by their mother. Um, and, and if they could say it, they would say, you know, I've got my whole life in front of me. I've got all these opportunities in front of me. And it, it, it gave me a great deal of, of satisfaction 
that that these things occurred um, and that there's this cyclical circumstance that occurs that brings people in and takes people out and that our world is replenished by hope and by desire and by you know a vision for the future and depleted by the death of someone however i don't know what that someone who passed contributed i don't know how many people he or she affected so while their passing may have been sad there might it's possible that their life may have been glorified glorified gleeful happy pronounced impactful and 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 as i live during these 78 years i want to be part of imparting information that i hope is beneficial um and i wouldn't call that heroic i would just simply call that humane and i would call it that that we have an obligation to each other uh, to provide our best insight and our best ability to console, to elevate, to educate, to give people opportunities that they may not have thought possible. And that's the cycle of life. And I think that there is something, I don't know, beautiful in that. I think there is something special in that. And, and I have been fortunate enough to be in the middle of some of that and frankly, on the receiving end of something. So um, to get back to the word heroism, I think heroism is, is, a, is a word that has multi, multi prongs, multi tentacles, multi, you know, circumstances that provide heroic acts that people never know or they never even realize. Because they said to someone, I love you, I care about you, I, I want you to succeed. I'm gonna give you everything I can to succeed. I think that's I think that's wonderful. And to me, that is part of the responsibility of being a human being.